Perfect. Perfect. Hi there, guys. I uh, hope you can uh, hear me out there in the big wide world. Um, and um, welcome along, guys. So welcome there, uh, Pat. Hi. And uh, JC, hi there. And Glenn, all. Oh, you're flying through the door today. Jim, welcome. And uh, Julie, it's so good of you to uh, pop by again today. So the, uh, the week has uh, flown by. So we're uh, we're on a uh, a Tuesday already. Um, so I can't believe how how quickly the time's actually flown by there. So let's just get the little camera all ready for you, nice and sharp. Oh, brilliant! How good's that? Okay, guys. So hi there, uh, Janet. Welcome. I hope you're. Are you still touring the world or touring um, the U.S. on your bike on your honeymoon? I hope it's uh, having a fabulous time. A time to remember, and uh, obviously time to uh, take in some ideas about um, paintings, so we can gather some information. So I hope I'm nice and clear. My voice is ringing out across the uh, across the oceans. So welcome. I hope you've had a fantastic week. The um, the title I've gone for today. Oh, and so you're back home, Janet. That's uh, safe and sound. That's good. That's good. I hope it was a fabulous time. Touring really does um, give you some inspiration and uh, all those beautiful views you see, they just come flooding in. When you get back, you, you recall them and you want to put them down on paper. So you want to put them down in a loose way, which is, uh, which is a, the best way ever, really. So uh, hi there. Um, hi, Sandy, Pat, Craig. Welcome along um, from Australia, Craig. You're doing very well. I'm not sure what the time is with you guys over there, but we're on, well, two o'clock in the afternoon. In an hour's time, the uh, the butler will be serving uh, high tea, which is always uh, an enjoyable uh, thing to have. I usually have about three cakes, a cup of tea, but it's always poured by the butler. We've got, uh, we've got standards where I am, and, uh, well, we have everywhere, but where I am, we've, uh, we've still got a few staff. In fact, I'll pay them more than I own myself, but I just do it for the kicks. So um, let's get cracking. Let's have a look at what we're going to do this week. So any questions, guys, I'll try to answer as I go along, but I try to paint, sing occasionally when my voice is up to it. Got a bit croaky again this week, guys, but we'll see what we can do. Um, and then show you how I'm going to go about this loose interpretation. So as you may know, or if you're new to this, I paint the same approach um, all the time, the, the approach being the same thing all the time, but the actual uh, subject matter can vary week to week. Well, it does vary week to week, but any subject is applicable. So let me just get a little bit of darkness on my image so we don't keep fading in and out. Oh, there's my little Amazon card. There we go. There's nothing left on that, believe you me. The... Um, Subject matter, this, this is applicable to every subject that you do. So it's not just flowers, it's not just buildings. All subjects are easily attainable with the right steps in this style. And that's really why I love it so much and also why I love um, telling other people about it. So as you know, I do tell people about it quite often. 11 p.m. Blimey. That's quite late, uh, Craig, so I do appreciate you staying up. So this week I've called this one, I've actually called it Vase of Joy, but I'm really going to call it Bucket of Joy because I've um, been thinking about it and I've found a nice little idea that I just want to share with you. So um, I did learn a new word, uh, Glenn, applicable. Yeah, I've been Googling new words all week. Um, and that was the only one that came up. I've got a, I must have a bad connection to Google. So guys, here we go. Got my little pencil there, all sharpened, all ready to rumble. And we're just going to, uh, going to start off with actual, this sort of bucket shape. So again, my drawing technique is simple, straightforward. A couple of little lines across the top. 
a little tilted angle going down. So I'm presuming that the angle of buckets throughout the world is about the same. And I didn't realize, but somebody told me that the angle of the side of the bucket is because that's how they stack them. So one will fit inside the other when they stack them on the production line. So uh, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I like the story. Uh, hi there, Rita. Welcome along. Um, Patreon. I'll just uh, just a quick question on that because I do get quite a few questions about it. I'm on uh, Patreon as well because it it, off, it allows me to offer um, still images as well as um, uh, videos, tutorials. So I can do the two things uh, on there, whereas YouTube just allows me the one branch. So it, it extends the amount that I can do. Um, and also, I've, I've, I've replicated quite a bit of stuff on Patreon that's on YouTube, but I'm going to be sort of doing separate things for the two separate areas. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, or if you want to email me, I'll give you a bit more info. Um, book it. There's the shape. Got the little dots down. Everything's ready to rumble. And now the flowers at the top, all I want to do is give myself a basic shape. Let's just move that, see if the Amazon card will help me. Yeah, brilliant. All I'm doing is basic shapes for the florals that I want within the bucket. Yeah, slightly larger this side. All they are, all they are little swirly, whirly, girly gigs. Yeah, one or two just leaning out there. But I don't want them so even, i.e. I'm not just going to put one this side and one this side. But I'm just going to try and make it balanced. So when you're actually composing your image, and really you will have to compose it because if you're looking at the reference too uh, vigorously, too uh, in-depth, you'll be drawn into that detail. And the whole idea of this is to... Uh, give your impression, your interpretation of what the object is. So that's where you have to, or where you can adapt the composition quite nicely. So you're not rigidly fixed to what's there. So I've got little swirly whirly gigs, which may seem a little bit, um, uh, a bit of a strange uh, word, but it's a bit like applicable, uh, Glenn. Um, it's the second word of the week. Somebody told me, Swirly whirly gigs. Uh, I think it was at a fairground, so uh, I thought I'll, I'll use in my uh, painting as well. Simple shapes. These can be adapted all the way through the painting. So the, the painting is, is movable. It's not fixed in stone of what I'm going to do or how it's going to turn out. I'm going with the painting. That's, got, that's my guide. Yeah? So uh, it's worth considering and keeping that sort of idea in mind. Oh yes, I'm taking questions, but I'll try. I'll answer them as many as many as I can. If I know the answer, um, oh, it could be so uh, florid and um, in depth. But if I don't know the answer, um, I might start singing, or you'll give us a joke. Yeah. Right. Okay, guys. So got everything going. Big brush. Big Brian is in the building. There he is. Look at him. Look at this. Look at the physique on that guy. Yeah. I don't know how he keeps it. I don't know how he keeps it because he just sort of sits next to my palette all week. But then he, he never puts a pound, gram or ounce on wherever you are, whatever uh, weight you use in your area. So a little bit of paint out. Always good for watercolour painting. I tried it without once and um, it just ended up as a, a polar bear on an ice cap with his eyes closed. Nothing there, really, nothing there. Absolutely, uh, Craig. Big Brian accepts your apologies there. He's like that with me. Okay, Big Brian, water on the brush. Yeah. Blob, 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 blob. Yeah. If you say the word blob, 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 it really does help. Yeah. There we go. Technical issues, Barbara, don't you worry. They, um, you're here now, and that's all that matters. Water on there, randomly, my blob blobbing is random, yeah? If I'm sitting here, placing it down specifically, I'm already getting tight, yeah? 
So now I'm going for lemon yellow. There it is on Big Primal. Looks quite nice in this hair, I find. Yeah, she could call, you could call him Big Ben uh, uh, Dala, but um, I don't think he'd, he'd, he wouldn't answer. He wouldn't answer. Okay, all I'm going to do is blob this down. Dark. Think of where the light's coming from. It's usually the sky but, or a light, but determine where your light's coming from and keep that at a fixed position. So there we are, throwing that on very simply. Hi there, Marianne. Welcome along. Thank you for joining me. Hope everything's good with you. Light yellow. Then slightly darker yellow. So this is really a cad yellow, a bit richer. Again, just throwing this on really quite randomly. I'm a very random type of guy. You may have gathered that by now. I'm taking some tablets to uh, stop me being so random, but I, I only take the tablets at, uh, at, at random, unfortunately. Not a stickler for detail, not a stickler for uh, time management either sometimes. Got all of that on, guys, yeah? But I'm keeping it at the back of my mind. In fact, it's actually rushing to the front of my mind, light to dark. Big Brian can do a little bit of delicate work as well. He's quite a nifty little fellow. I think he's learned it off uh, Miss Rigger because she's um, actually so adept on the dance floor as well as on the uh, the paint floor that she's uh, she's getting some bookings for Vegas. I just don't know how many is going to turn up. Well, I booked. Put it that way. I'm Big Brian. So we'll be in the front row. Yeah, the one I've just thrown on there, Rita, is um, gold ochre. Yeah, so it's quite a rich, um, it's a bit like yellow ochre, but it's a bit more orangey-fied. Got all of that on, guys. Yeah, now we'll use a little bit of tissue. Hi there, Jean, welcome along. Starry night in Australia, that sounds... Uh, Sounds beautiful. Starry, starry night. Paint your palette. Orange and crimson, was it? I, I, I always know the first part of the lyrics, but after that I drift off a bit, like everything else. All of that is, is wet, yeah? So there's water for a start, then liquid pigment. Now I've got a little bit of torn off tissue. Always a winner. Good stuff, tissue. I say good stuff because it's, it really does allow you to throw on rich, thick, well, relatively thick pigment and then go in and lift it off. But if you tinker about the other way around, i.e. You, um, you try to be delicate, build up the colour, then it, um, it takes too long and you lose the benefit of this real um, throwing it on and letting it move about doing its own thing attitude which is uh, really the one you want got all of that on guys when i pick off as well the key thing is where i've picked it off it's going to be dry -er. so again as i say all i did there was put an er on the end of the word dry and it's formed another word glenn so that's three i'm on a roll got all that now I'm going to find a few centers and Big Brian's still doing his thing. Sorry, Big Brian. I really didn't mean to inconvenience you. Just wanted to sit down. There we go. So I'll find a few centers. And again, as I pointed out at the beginning, I'm throwing off the whirly girly gigs, the shapes, but I'll just use the ones that I, uh, I want to do. Then we've got second one, a few more little dots and dashes, centers. They're just thrown on, they're just thrown on. That is the key thing to it. Once you get uh, this moving, 
it um, it starts to develop itself. Already, it's giving me suggestions of what to do. Quite a lot of people give me suggestions of what to do, um, but I I, uh, I find them actually physically impossible. So uh, I don't do most of them. Being an artist, you tend to do that type of thing. You tend to find your own way. Right, okay there guys, so got this on. Now I've got a ladyship, or international, presents the fabulous, the gorgeous, the effervescent Miss Rigger. Now we're just going to drop a little bit of uh, suggested foliage around, or some areas, but nothing too uh, in depth. So this is sap green mixed with a bit of gold ochre. Just going to get some positions for a start. And really, when I'm placing this down, this starts to pick out the negative shapes. Just chopping around a few of them. Not all, but some. few draped over this way. Absolutely, ta-da! This is a t always a ta-da moment when Miss Rigger appears. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da. That's another uh, introductory sound that her ladyship's very, very uh, accustomed to now. Really, she's getting to be quite a, quite a, quite a famous lady, which is great. I hope she doesn't forget me. So you sell, I think her opening uh, gambit now with some people is, or people say, loved it, loved it to see you, Miss Rigger. Who's the bloke on the end of your uh, on the end of your arm? So uh, amazing, uh, stardom. So getting all this on, guys. Just draping it about, just little dots and dashes. Ultimately, with loose. Your biggest battle is always going to be a mental battle. And the mental battle is to um, to stop predicting shapes, stop predicting everything. As in life, you uh, if you try and force the issue, it doesn't really work as well. It's like a surprise. They just happen and you love them all the more. But when it's very forced and contrived, you just feel as if, no, it's, it wasn't ready to be. So to allow the painting to dictate the uh, everything to you is, is the thing that works. Absolutely, uh, she, uh, Miss Rigger is insured for uh, at least a million pounds now. So um, she, she, she's very regal, but it's not gone to her head. She's still, she's still very grounded. And she still uh, pops along to the studio quite often, in fact, every day. And uh, it, it's, uh, she helps me out. We're friends for life. She's a lovely, lovely lady. So we've got that on, guys. That's gradually getting drier here. Hi there, Robin. Welcome along. You're never late to the party. You, you just timed it perfectly, absolutely perfectly. Miss Rigger's going to have a little lie down for a second. Guess who's uh, guess who else is going to join us now? Begins with D and ends in Dave. Yeah, there he is, dangerous Dave. Look at him, and he's he's just had he washed his hair, and look at that perfect perfect shape. So, dangerous Dave is going to help us. Going to put some water on Dave. Dangerous Dave. Yes, Mister Deason. Come on. We're all ready to rumble. He's got a very high pitched voice. Okay, got a bit of water on there. Now I'm going to go in with uh, cerulean blue. Dave is a number 14 dagger brush. So he's relatively big fella. I'll just bring. Uh, Big Brian over, so you can see the size comparably. They're about the same sort of length, and obviously the different shapes going to give you a different uh, finish. But it's quite a reasonably sized 
head of the brush, which is a good thing. Bit of cerulean blue there, guys. Helicopter going overhead, I don't know if you can hear that. That may be coming to fetch Miss Riga for our next gig. I think she's uh, she's going to a garden centre to paint some uh, some florals, hopefully. Ultramarine blue, she's chopping this on. Great thing about Dangerous Dave, he's really good at picking out lines, long lines, just placing down. You're good to go. In fact, yes, I'll just answer your question there, guys, because, again, people keep asking me this one. The, the brushes, I'm working with um, Pro Arte, who I use, well, I use all of their brushes, actually. Um, so I did a big uh, exhibition in the summer, had a chat to those guys, and they're putting everything together. Um, interestingly enough, I've, I've made them change the names from um, what they call them normally for years to Miss Rigger, uh, Dangerous Dave, um, Big Brian and Flat Phil. So the fraud brushes are actually going to have those names along the side, which um, uh, at least you remember them. In fact, the, 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 the folks at the company uh, couldn't stop laughing. But, uh, oh, little do they know, little do they know. No, they're very good guys. They're really uh, very helpful. In fact, I've um, I've confirmed everything today, so hopefully within about a week um, they should be available. So if you're interested, guys, drop me a line and we'll sort everything out for you. But the one thing I did find with the brushes, I mean, I've tried different ones over the years, and they these are the ones that work for me. Hence, I use them all the time. And they're not overly expensive, that's the thing. I mean, I'm not 100% on the price of the brushes yet. I think we're looking at around, for the four, I think we're looking about £35, something like that. So it's um, pretty useful. But I've tried very expensive brushes. They, they were actually too good for the purpose. I'm not decrying my guys, but they were too good. They kept the point too well. Um, which was one of the major disadvantages. So these ones work really well. So got those colours on there, guys. Light to dark, again, you can see across the bucket. Now we'll call upon Miss Rigger again. If you would, Miss Rigger, take to the floor. Just those little lines across there, quite interesting. Dry, because I picked stuff off. Wet disappears, but the eye, follows all the way along the shape adding a bit on the bottom there just to make it a little bit uh, more uh, balanced again dry you see i don't really know where the dry stuff is until i hit it so that's the um finding out wh where things are happening you've got a rough idea because you know where you place things down but only when you do that um, will you see what's happening. Got all the stuff at the top. Again, you can touch test it by just touching it and testing it. Name's in the word. But that will again tell you how damp it is or how dry it is. And again, you can always remember when you were up there and how it... Uh, Yes, it's um, it's interesting point, Glenn, literally, the point of a brush, because when you're placing it down, that little thin end is always making a mark, and you invariably go back and try and get rid of it, which is a, a, a bother. It dries. Um, you're spending more of your time trying to get rid of those little marks you don't want, rather than concentrating on the stuff that you want to do. Miss Rigger, back in town. I'm just going to scoot around a few of these very quickly in a sense. It's not a speed thing, but there's no need to deliberate too long. I'll really look at the centres and guesstimate how far the petals may um, jump out. The leaves overlap in there. 
And again, you can just put little marks down, dots, push a few in. That's all you need to do. Yes, you, you, um, it's, it's the unexpectedness of it is a good thing. You will naturally want to control a painting. That's your first instinct. But when you learn to let go, and it's very easy to say that because you, when you let go, you think, well, I, I don't know what I'm doing. By repetition, you'll, you'll find out these little things. The, the quest, when the question pops into your own head, then you'll answer it. When I tell you the answer straight away, you'll think, well, it doesn't mean anything to me. But when you're, when you're actually doing the painting, that's when it really resonates. So um, there's no rush. Hyacinth Bucket. I didn't realise you knew Hyacinth Bucket in Australia, uh, Craig. She's a, a very forceful lady, gets things done. She's um, fantastic, isn't she? And her husband, I forget what his name was, but he was uh, always did what he was supposed to do. <laughs> okay, scooting round here. Again, it's placing the, the green down. This is sap green, just around some of these shapes. And you can see that the actual flowers start to appear. Yes, it's um, individually, you'll look at this painting as it develops and sometimes you'll be saying, no, no, don't do any more or do more, do more. The thing is, ultimately, it's individually, this is how I'm doing it. When you do yours, you'll have your own way and people will look and say, well, I'd do that, I'd do that. You've got to be your own judge and jury. You can't turn to anybody and say, how do I do this? You can at the initial stages, but your best form of learning is, is doing it. Just do it and see what happens. And you'll be far more rewarded when you discover it than when you're told it. Little lines, a ladyship, fabulous at those. That could shoot all the way through the arrangement. Decide which is at the front, which is at the back. That's all. Ah, right. So Hyacinth is a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, she's uh, she did make me laugh. I think Pr Patricia Routledge, I think, was Hyacinth, as I recall. Very good actress. So there we go. Just running these around. So I tell you what, if you've got a song that you want me to have a go at, although I do apologise again this week, croaky throat, lots of work on talking all the time, but I'll have a go at something. A little bit some bobs. And uh, just to, if Melanie's watching, I did get your email. Thank you for that, very kind. I've had a look at the song and I think it's fantastic, but I just need a little bit more practice because I only saw it last night. So I don't want to... Uh, completely ruin the image but i will have a go at that one very kind of you thank you these little dots and dashes now just building up you can see the flowers coming forward you know they're not overly specific but they start to grow organically i've not gone left to right i just keep moving backwards and forwards Uh, no, we've got quite a few suggestions coming in here, guys. I'll read them in a second. So now I'm just adding a few centres, nothing too over the top. The great thing is plonk it down, see what it looks like, and then if you don't like it, pick it off. If you do like it, you can still use the tissue to soften it down. Because when you first pull it down, you think that's quite sharp, it's a bit strong. That little darkness in there automatically just leads the eye in. This is the foliage at the petals at the front, that's at the back. That was all it was. 
just a little dot of stuff. Here, this could be the back of a flower, but it could be, I don't think I will, just be for sparing and consider, uh, consider the shape. Go and do the same there. That's purely a bit of darkness, just on where the actual centre of the flower is. Ah, Richard was Hyacinth's husband in, um, was it Keeping Up Appearances? I think that was it. As much as I try to keep up appearances, I doesn't really work. I, um, I build up my social standing and then every time I go out, I blow it. And then I do it again. Life's fun. Life is for the living. There we go, guys. A few more centers changing now to a little bit of uh, um, cad orange. All simple colors. There's no great mystery about the brushes or the colors that I use. They're all available, hopefully, all over the world. Winsor and Newton ones. Um, and as, as I say, the brush is very simple. So I'm just reading a few of your comments, guys, while I... Uh... Oh, thank you, Jean. I love my uh, work and personality. Brilliant. Thank you. I shall... I shall uh, well, I'm going red, or should I say cad red, with a touch of um, uh, lemon yellow in there. Got all that going on, guys. Again, I'll leave it. Give it a bit of space. Give it a bit of breathing time. Because if you keep, you'll get fascinated by an area and think what you want to develop a, a certain bit. But just walk away from it, i.e. either just with a brush and don't, don't keep clawing at it. And then you can go back when the actual um, take of the, the uh, paper is a bit drier. Throwing it on again, in the middle of the water. Don't forget to use water as a, as a tool for softening off and all this sort of caper. Again, I might dive into that greenery. Ah, hi there, Corrine. Um, I hope you're, um, well, I hope if you're in the path of the hurricane, I hope you're safe and I hope everybody else is. It's, uh, it looks uh, a dreadful thing to have to endure, so I do uh, hope you're okay there. Little dark bits. Be sparing with your darks. Yeah, you can get everything on, nice coverage. Your darks are really where the sun don't shine, if you forgive the expression. But it is. They're not really to do anything else too much. They're just pockets of darkness to drag the eye into the image. Again, negatively shaping the end of a few little bits. Not all. Again, just zooping and whooping. There we go, look at that. And then, Miss Rigger, where are you going, Miss Rigger? Just down here, just down here. Just to throw a bit more on. A little bit under there. Now I'm just going to use a dark, which is indigo. So you get a bit of shadow cast down here. That's the handle. I don't mean the... Uh, Oh, 17th or 18th century composer. I just mean the thing to carry it with. There we go. In fact, while I was in Italy, one thing I did see and I uh, didn't realise was I saw Michelangelo's final resting place in Florence. So uh, I uh, honoured the great man. 
I'm not saying beyond great, but he was uh, his resting place is in Florence, so it's a well worth a, a visit and quite a, a poignant place to go to. Yes, Miss Rigger's on fire today. She's um, now she's got over her travels. She's absolutely buzzing to uh, do all of these quick things we need to do. So we've got all that on, guys. Now, just a little bit of shadow underneath, nothing too heavy. Dangerous David on for this one, dragging it round. Go Dave, go Mr. Dave sir, go Sir Dave. Don't stop Dave, there you go. Brilliant. Just move that up guys so you can see it. In all Dave's magical glory. A little bit of a patchwork number there. We'll throw a little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue into the surface. We'll give you that sort of again cast shadow using the colour to resonate with the pot. The table shadow was. Um, let's have a look. Perilean violet and a little bit of Indian red. So uh, just a combination of those quite loosely placed on. Now, not uh, it was perilean violet, which is a interesting one. It's a red, more very red violet as opposed to the uh, Windsor violet, which is a purpley uh, setup. Got all that on, guys. Where's Miss Rigger gone? There she goes, hiding away. Oh, that's high praise indeed, uh, Marianne. The um, but he was uh, he was spectacular. A bit deranged, I fear, at times, but quite spectacular in everything he did, wasn't he? Right, okay, what else have we got? Oh, I know, a little bit of an extension of the handle. Miss Rigger, could you do that? Could you do handles? I surely can. Surely. But looking there, letting the eye follow that round. The handle goes round, I change the colour. I don't just go for the colour of the handle. Is, is, is the is the interesting thing about this Do you change the colors change the mood again i could keep tapping a little bit of darkness just into this corner which i always quite like to do because it's wet it's going to bleed out and it does it paints it for you very 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 simple so we're not far off there guys so what were, what were the songs, guys, again? I forget what they were, but they were beautiful the suggestions. Let me have a little, have a little look back. Um, Sorry guys, I'm just reading reading some of the songs we put down. Oh, there's there's one the Beatles one. Let's have a little thing. I'll try and think how it uh, how it goes. What paper am I using? Um, it, watercolor paper. Nice. <laughs> Sorry. For me, being far too joculent for my own good, it's a 140 pound knot, so it's unstretched, and um, it, which which is how I use it all the time. I don't I don't need to use stretch paper. I want the buckling, uh, which is useful thing. Funny enough, uh, I was thinking the same myself, Sue. The Queen didn't call today, which is very rare. She always calls on a Tuesday, just as we're about to. Uh, we're about to do our broadcast. Maybe she wants to join in. I think all she needs to do is send me a friend's request, and then uh, we can uh, we can do it. We can uh, honour that, can't can't we? Mm. 
Right, I'm just having a look for some a quick Beatles song for you guys. Absolutely, I think she's got a, she's got a horses today. She'll be okay. All right, okay. <clears throat> right, let's have a quick look. I've got this one, Eleanor Rigby. So maybe if we'll try that one for a second, folks, if you'd like to join in. Uh, 300 grams is 140 pound, Reef, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, not pressed, which is uh, cold, cold, cold pressed as well. Always confusing. Always confusing. This one's a sort of midway, mid texture. Hi there, Jennifer. Welcome, welcome. Always good to see you. Right, okay, Helen, Eleanor Rigby. But uh, if my voice goes, you know what it is. It's because my voice is gone. Okay, guys. Let's use this. Right. Helen of Rigby picks up the rice in the church where the wedding has been. Lives in a dream, wait at the window, wearing the face that she keeps in a glass by a door. Who is it for all the lonely people? Where do they all come from? All the lonely people, where do they all belong? Father Mackenzie picks up the rice. <laughs> right in the words of the sermon that no one can hear. No one come near, look at him working, down in his socks in the night where there's nobody there. Who does he care, all the lonely people? Where do they all come from? No, all the lonely people. Where do they all belong? Do, do. Ah, look at all the lonely people. Do, 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 do. Ah, look at all the lonely people. Do, 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 do. Eleanor Rigby died in the church where they buried along with her name. Nobody came, Father Mackenzie. Wiping the dirt from his hands as he walked from the grave. No one would save all the lonely people. Where do they all come from? All the lonely people. Where do they all belong? Do, do, do. Ah, look at all the lonely people. Do, 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 do. Ah, look at all the lonely people. Do, 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 do. There we go, folks. Not that I've ever sang that one before, but uh, I do like the song. So I apologise if there's a few bum notes in there, but that's that's life. Okay, guys. So back to the painting briefly. The Painting all relatively dry now. Miss Rigger can just dive in for those last little bits. So when we're painting dry, obviously we know it's not going to flood anywhere far anywhere too far beyond where the positioning we place it down is, i.e. there's no moisture and no dampness there to drag it any further. Little dots and dashes, all these little dots and dashes really do just add uh, distance, a bit more value to the painting without saying anything. And really when you think about it, all of the marks are trying to describe something. And again, it's really back to that initial thing that you've got to get away from that thought that everything you do, you're trying to describe. Just allow pockets of undescript areas to be as valid as everything you're trying to, to place down as well. So it's a very interesting 
approach to painting, a very interesting and always challenging approach to, uh, to getting where you want to go with your watercolours. So these little dots and dashes, just doing their own thing, floating about, guys. Again, always use your bit of tissue there to, to dive in if you want to pick little bits out. Finally, I can put a few petals on, but nothing much. Let's have a look where we've got some, maybe a couple just here. But I paint around the petal. And not actually the, the leaf itself. The pigment's on already for what I want at the background. So you've already put that down. And then you're just chopping around it just to allow the... Uh, those lines to subtly sometimes, and it really can be very subtle, just to give you a little bit of description, nothing much at all. Subtlety is the key. Now, drag some other colours in, doesn't really matter. They're alive and they're organic and they're just floating about and doing their own thing. So really guys, oh, one more thing to do, and I think it's one thing I should encourage you guys to do as well because we've done a painting, so it's always worth signing your little painting there at the end. It's um, a great little exercise as well for getting used to using your rigger, a very simple thing. But use that, sign your work, be proud of it, be proud of it. Don't be scared of it. It's an enjoyable thing. You've done it. You've created something. It was your moment. So I would encourage you all to sign it and really enjoy that, uh, that little journey every time, guys. So I think we're almost there, everyone. I really do appreciate you um, popping along and uh, enjoying the moment. The, um, I'll just briefly run through my... Ah, there's the Queen. What a surprise. Every every Tuesday without fail. I'll phone her back in a minute. The um, quick little things. Uh, holiday in Wales is coming up, so if you booked on with me, really looking forward to getting together for that week in Wales. It's going to be fab. I hope you've received all the info I've sent over, and I'm going to send an itinerary very soon. Uh, we've got a couple of workshops again next year in the same place, Wales. Do look out for those. Um, but I think they're, they're pretty well full already, so there may be a few spaces if you're at all interested, drop me a line. Um, the brushes, as uh, we touched on very earlier, or a little bit earlier, um, we're going to be a range of four brushes that will be available very, very soon. Hopefully within a week, if not that, definitely two. If you're interested, drop me a line, but I will put some proper stuff on Facebook and the internet about uh, where you can get them and what they are, so if you're interested, uh, please feel free to uh, have a look at those. Um, uh, subscription sites, again, all of my latest stuff's on there. Now I'm back home of getting new stuff on all the time, really going to fill that up. So if you want to learn this style, really is the best place to go to. Um, Patreon as well, another simple thing, gives you some good info, tells you all about how I go about these things. And as I say, I'm going to slightly deviate what I'm doing on Patreon um, from the YouTube stuff. So there's going to be two sort of separate branches of everything that I do. And I do it for you. And they wrote the song for me to tell you that I do it for you. Um, I think that's about it, guys. Ah, one last thing. Workshops in the UK. I've Today I'm going to put an advert on. Well, I say advert. It advertises all the things about it. They're going to be in Leicestershire. Um, one in October, I believe the 10th or the 11th, and one in November, which is about the 14th. If you're interested in that, just drop me a line, send me an email, send me a message on any of the little bits that are wrong, and then um, uh, you're more than welcome to join me on that. That'll be a fabulous time. Really nice venue we've got there. Uh, US, you, you, I'd love to come over to the US, guys. I've been looking into the um, visa bits and bobs. So when I come over, I'd like to do quite a few places, cover the old country, me, Miss Rigger, Brian, Flatville, and Dangerous Dave. So I will be coming over sometime. 
Um, it won't be before Christmas, unfortunately, but hopefully in the new year, I'll get an itinerary done. So if you've got venues you'd like me to come to, um, just come over. I would say come over. I'll, that's me. I'll get on a plane. I'll come over, venues, let me know, and I'll get in contact with the people and set something up. So we'll really look into that, and I'd love to come over. So that'd be fabulous, guys. So thank you again for joining me. Do appreciate it. Keep an eye on my stuff. Send me some messages. Feel the love of loose watercolours, and uh, have a go at this one, guys. Post it on Facebook or wherever you want to post it, and um, you'll do well. You'll do well. Look back at this for some info. And uh, enjoy the moment, guys. Always enjoy the moment. So uh, until next week, have a fabulous week. Have a fabulous loose painting time. And uh, take care. And uh, see you then. Okay. Goodbye.